So Ziba, um, tell us a little bit about how you got the idea for the game. Yeah, um, you know, the, the um, game really came about because um, my husband was working on another game at the time and, you know, trying to apply his uh, experiences with the fun of games and fun of gaming to education. And so I tried to figure out how I could, because I, I love playing games. Now, I don't have um, much online gaming or video game experience that he did, uh, but I did have experiences with playing cards. And mm -hmm. um, I played a card game called Gin Rummy. And a lot of uh, uh, what is involved in Gin Rummy is really grouping together cards and sets and groups and trying right. to get a good hand. And so I thought of how this could be applied to diagnostics. And essentially, that's what you do when you walk into a patient's room. You've been dealt a hand. Mm -hmm. of symptoms, signs, and you've just got to work your way through that hand and try to figure out how this, you know, what, what, what diagnosis is this going to fit into. So trying to, I saw parallels in that, those two worlds, and uh, I just tried to put it together. And so essentially, as you have the different suits in a uh, game of cards, hearts, spades, uh, clubs and so on. I thought, okay, well, let's do symptoms, signs, um, aspects of labs, and then imaging. And say, if I was dealt, you know, a hand like that, how could I group them together under um, different diagnoses, such that I'm creating um, a group of cards that support one diagnosis, or two subgroups. Uh, which support two diagnoses. And that's uh, where the name came from, Occam's Razor. Uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. have questions about that. You know, what, what's Occam's Razor? How does it relate to uh, medicine and gaming and diagnosis? And um, Occam was really a, a British friar, and he proposed what's called the simplicity of reasoning. And the simplest answer or the simplest single answer is the best one. Um, and uh, that's, you know, a great approach to diagnoses. And if we attempt to follow that, you usually end up um, not missing the forest for the trees. And you right. tend to kind of get the bigger picture if you try to put it all in one diagnosis. However, it's limited because patients can have more than one diagnosis. And so you sometimes risk... Uh, trying to, you know, missing stuff if you're trying to put everything or put everything into one box. And so Hickam, who was um, actually a physician at Duke University in the 1950s, said patients can have as many diagnoses as they damn well please. And those were his exact words. Um, and I think that uh, provides a good counter argument to Occam's razor. And I think good medicine is a balance of the two. Um, what the card game strives to bring out is both those principles. You know, you've got to um, try and fit everything into one basket, if you please. Um, but remember, a patient can have other diseases as well. So you, you do have the option to create subgroups of cards um, that uh, are supporting a second diagnosis. Representing those cor comorbid factors and things that are going on with the patient. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. A patient can have pneumonia. Okay, so a patient comes in with fever and you can, you know, think of a thousand things that cause fever. But then you have fever, chest pain, and a cough. And yeah, you can put those together with the pneumonia. But what if he has, you know, um, a, a nasty swollen joint? Uh, um he may have a pneumonia and he may have an attack of gouty arthritis that mm -hmm. came on because he was so dehydrated from his pneumonia. And you can't just, you know, discard that completely. You've got to give that weight and uh, kind of incorporate it into your diagnoses. So that's kind of, you know, the, the, that's where the name came from, Occam's versus Occam's razor. Um, the game 
in itself, um, it's, you know, it's pretty simple to play. And that was the other thing. If we, you know, if we, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible so people could learn it quickly, um, you know, have fun playing just a, a quick round, you know, it didn't require a lot of setup, just cards and, you know, historically cards have been the most universally played. It's, it, you know, it's crossed cultures, it's crossed um, education levels, and, you know, all you need is to uh, basically figure out a few basic mathematic principles and know your numbers and then you've got uh, umpteen ways to use these cards. And so in right. the game, we've actually, you know, we, we've come up with four ways um, to use these cards to play four different types of games. And I'm sure as, you know, people play them, they're going to come up with more ways of putting these cards to use and um, helping it further their education. And um, the four ways that we currently can play our cards are... Um, you can either play this gym rummy, you know, try and group the cards, the hand that you have into sets and create diagnoses and sub-diagnoses. But you can also play an Occam solitaire version where one person just kind of, kind of has, you know, that's if you don't have anyone to play with. And, um, or if you prefer solitaire, you um, like that kind of self-study. Right. Um, and then there's, uh, I don't know if, you ever played Cluedo, but it's basically guess the deduce the disease, guess the hidden disease, who was a murderer. Um, and okay. in that same um, category, you know, the Cluedo version has a hidden card that that's a disease and everyone has to deduce that that's what the patient has. Um, so those are three ways. Actually, we've got a, you know, um, uh, kind of a, a group of students and um, people that play that we've worked with that you know, constantly are thinking of new ways to use these cards, new ways to play right. the game. Um, and I um, uh, I just look forward to, you know, new utilization of the cards, as well as, you know, coming up with new games for different kinds of... I've, I've limited this to 15 diseases, and really the 15 most commonly encountered diseases in within a hospital setting. Uh, but I'm sure if this is... A success, and if people enjoy it, then we'd love to do more um, along the same lines, or even you know, slightly different. Yeah, you could you could do an endocrinology version right. or <laughs> cardiology That's version. Right. You could really branch out into specialties. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Now, what's your background? Yeah, because obviously you have a medical background, and so tell us a little bit about you know your background. Yeah. Um, so I am, um, I'm an internist, um, and um, I worked as a hospitalist for about eight years. Um, I trained at, um, I'm, I'm a foreign medical graduate. I did my undergraduate in India uh, at the Christian okay. Medical College. And then um, after that, I uh, did my residency in Baltimore at the Good Samaritan Residency Program. Um, that's also where um, uh, I was exposed to a lot of, uh, we used to do rotations at Hopkins and a lot of, um, you know, really exciting and innovative teachers. Um, and uh, then I started working as a hospitalist and basically that's frontline medicine, just um, looking at uh, problems that roll through the ER. Um, and it, they're usually the more acute problems, you know, not your cough and colds or sore throats, but uh, more, um, you know, acute cholecystitis, pneumonia, things that would put you in the hospital. So right. that, that is my area of expertise as far as medicine. Um, and more recently, I've been, um, uh, you know, also taking a role in palliative medicine. Um, and uh, so that's, that's basically my background. What's next for the game? I mean, you've got these opportunities for expansion, but uh, do you do you have a way for people to contact you if they find a new way to play the game? If they you know pick up the game on Amazon or something and they go, "Wow, I, I do it this way." Yes, uh, we have a website, um, and uh, it's basically if you you know type in Occam's Razor um, and get on the site, um, we've got. Uh, 
and so the, the the parent company, our company that you know we focus on producing um, medical education material, mm-hmm. uh, is called Nerdcore Medical. And so if you go to nerdcoremedical.com, and uh, we have a blog there, where we're open to um, you know any comments and feedback about both the game and suggestions for new games. So we'd love to hear from people about ways in this which you know in which this can be improved. Um, we're constantly you know looking at like I've already come up with little ways that I think I could already improve upon Occam's Razor, and so in version two, um, we're going to incorporate those um, changes, and so we're constantly. Um, uh, thinking about ways to improve it. So any suggestions um, are welcome. And um, well, and I know that uh, the game's available on Amazon, so people can find it there and uh, on your website as well. And uh, it, it's exciting to see uh, educators coming up with new and inventive ways to uh, help people learn uh, good patient care, which is what it's all about. Yeah, that's right. And one thing that I think uh, games do is it brings up, you know, it makes learning personal. Um, I I remember as a resident on rounds, and I'm sure um, nursing students and residents have this as well, is when they're observing uh, a teaching nurse on rounds and they observe a patient, even though, you know, there, there's um, all this hype about problem-based learning and how it's the best way to approach learning, those patients or those, the, you know, the, the problems that they're encountering on the wards don't really become their problems. They don't take ownership of it. It's, it's, you know, in the end, it's not my skin and someone else is going to manage the patient. Um, so there's nothing there to personalize that problem. Um, when you're dealt a hand of Occam's razor, all of a sudden you've got like, two problems in there that you've got to fix. You've got to get those, you know, get your your hand organized and you're playing against friends and so that's you know first of all this first incentive is it's my problem I've got to figure out how to fix it second incentive is you know it's it's social I've got to get ahead of my friends I want to try and win this game and um, uh, the third is it's fun Um, and uh, I think all of those uh, make a great case for gamifying um, education Definitely, and and I like I said, I love to see game applications. Uh, I'm a I'm a firm believer in something I like to call, and I didn't coin this term; someone else did. But edutainment, um, mm-hmm. education that is also entertaining, because when you can tie an emotion to something that you've heard, you you internalize it and learn it that much better. Absolutely, and you create these pathways. You know, hearing a lecture on acute cholecystitis, you may absorb maybe you know, a, a little bit here and there. But if you've heard of acute cholecystitis, if you've tried to put two and two together in the past, all of a sudden you've heard those symptoms, you've heard that disease being mentioned, even if it was just mentioned. And it just reinforces those pathways so much more. And uh, essentially didactic learning can reinforce what you've already planted the seeds for through games and um, uh, education. <laughs> Well, Ziba, I want to thank you for taking a little bit out of your busy schedule to sit down with me and, and chat about this. Um, we'll have links to, in the show notes for this and uh, let people know how they can get a hold of Occam's Razor and, and make it part of their learning and, and refresher experience. Absolutely. I appreciate you having us. I uh, look forward to spreading the word and uh, getting more people excited about learning through games and uh, get more more games out there. Excellent.